righty, we're going to get started. Good morning, everybody. All right. I couldn't hear you. We're going to go ahead and get started. All right. Well, welcome, everybody, to the weekly team meeting. We are going to start off. I'm subbing in for Johnny today. I'm Eric Hoffman. A lot of you know who I am. So we're going to start off with tell me something good. So who has something good to share with the group? If you do just raise your hand, who's got something good? <laughs> All right. I'll go. All right. Who else would like to share something good? Yes. I'm starting to say because I work uh, FISBOs and expires a lot. Okay. And I'm starting to get a lot of uh, returns from FISBOs. Okay. They're starting to reach back out to me. Uh, and I've got a listing appointment set for Saturday. The guy originally wanted to do a cash deal uh, buyout, but he decided to uh, call me yesterday and said, because uh, I was supposed to go this afternoon for the listing appointment. And he talked to me, and then he reached back to me and said, No, I said, I won't put it on the market. I want you to list it for me. And so I'm going Saturday to do the listing with him. And I've got another one in Sun City uh, that I reached out to on a FISBO. And he's renting his house. His mom died. He's renting the house in the plus 55 community. He's renting for another month out. And then he wants me to list it for him. So I'm starting to see. Fizbos are reaching back. I think the market changes on them, mm -hmm. and they're starting to come back to us and say, "Well, you think guys think you could sell my house for me?" <laughs> yeah, a little tougher nowadays. Yeah, so it makes sense. So that's awesome. my something good. Excellent. Let's give him a hand. Great job. <laughs> Who else? Who's got a victory to share? Yes. Yeah, we um, actually it's uh, going to go on the market on the 15th, and it's in a very exclusive area that. Very seldom probably come on the market in golf club. It's residential golf club by Grand Clay Golf Course, and it's just a shy under 1.7 million foot and beautiful. Place. And um, so we're staging it. We'll have um, all the you know videography and all that stuff done next week. That's why we're putting on the market on the 15th. But if you have anybody in that area? I mean, it's uh, I, I don't think there's been a house on market in two years. Ago. Oh, wow. Or if it is, we don't hear about it. It's yeah. residences that sell among ourselves. So, yeah. Uh, it's my mentor in business for over 40 years. So, yeah, yeah, really good guy. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Very Let's give him a hand. Great job. Anybody else? You got a victory? I apologize if I came in at the wrong moment. But I have a new listing coming up. Is this the yeah, time for that? Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so this is in Newcastle on top of a hill. It's a thousand feet up. It's a 2,000 square foot house, hot tub, store with the eagle while you sit in your hot tub. It's pretty nice. Uh, we're listing at 890,000. Um, taking pictures today. If you guys want to get somebody out early, it won't be live for a little bit. Just let you know. And a uh, great little place. Uh, but it is on top of a hill. It is beautiful. 270 degree view. You can see Mount Diablo and the Sierras all on the front porch. Uh, cool. Awesome. Uh, right. uh, about 2,000 square feet. It does have a basement room underneath that you could probably put another 1,000 square feet down there. Awesome. Let's get Barry Hand. Great job. Anybody else want to share a victory? All right. Time for our lender update. Yay. So, guys, rates have been swinging back and forth. And what was great this morning is because I'm using, I am using a Cali to pay a lot right now, but it went down to 4.875, which is really good. And that's with the 10% grant. Or you can do it up to 200,000, which is to buy a home. But the point of even using that program, and it is only for some home buyers, is it pays the points for the client. So they're not paying out of pocket if you're not having to ask the seller for it. But the rate is so 
so much lower than the market rate that it's giving them much lower payment. So I'm using it like crazy. <clears throat> the other thing I want to share with you guys that I need to do a lot. Builders are desperate. They are so damn desperate to sell houses right now. They are giving away the moon and they're dropping prices, they're getting expensive, and they're calling me like crazy because they get shot and they get canned. So they're just they're doing some awesome deals like getting to a loan that's 16 standing inventory. And that and has been that way in so many years, right? So what I'm doing with my clients is I'm getting a lot of these calls of people who put on hold now all of a sudden they're back. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited. You call me at the perfect timing. You just switched in the last two weeks back to a buyer's market. I'm really stressing that to them. I see the HUD foreclosures. One just popped up five acres in Grass Valley for 300,000. So yes, there's work to be done, but with those type of loans, you could finance the repair. But just seeing that once, that I'm like musing on every single conversation with a client. I'm like, oh man, this market's so exciting. It's the best time. I'm so glad you called right now. And especially because rates, uh, it went down like over a quarter percent just from Friday to yesterday. That's a huge jump. But that's what I'm seeing. Rates are doing this big time. And I keep explaining that to the client. I'm like, hey, just because it's five and a half today, tomorrow it'll be 4.8. Don't let the rate deter you because it's moving this rapidly. And they're going to do that to let people back in the market and then shut the faucet off. They turn it back on and then shut the faucet off. And that's what they're going to do gradually. So I just, I think you guys use it to your advantage. Um, call everybody today. Say, hey, rates went down a quarter percent. Isn't that exciting? And just that phone call, they're like, wait, what? Let me know the tone. I'm so excited. So use that little tidbit of the news to your advantage because it's a great reason to call and get people fired up. But yeah, the deals I'm seeing right now are off the hook. So. $50,000 drop. Quick question for you. Do you think that on and off, is that the lenders controlling their volume so that's because of their employee staffing? Or is that the so market there's actually? So many reasons that the rates change. I mean, it's insane. So I follow daily rate lock advisory, and it tells you, like, here are the three reports coming out today 9 a.m., 11, and 1 o'clock. And then you Google it. And so then when you're talking to your client, you, can, you feel very knowledgeable, like, hey, here's the pricing index came out this morning, and here's what happened, here's what it did to rates. But that website shares with you, today's rates got better by a quarter percent, they got worse by you know, an eighth percent, whatever it is. And sometimes it'll have like a midday change, but it'll also tell you anything happening the rest of the week and why it's happening. So if you go on that website today, it says rates are supposed to get better in 20 days from now. So, you know, will they go up first before they go down? Maybe. So I just tell clients, like, hey, they could go up before they go down. But the point is, this is what's going to happen. And so be prepared for that. Don't let the rate be a driving factor for your decision. Because what comes up must come down right now, which is good. I mean, artists keep letting people in the market little at a time. Um, and so it's, it's a control of appreciation. They're really keeping it under, the goal is 5% per year. We already are at 5% year to date. So even if we grew nothing the rest of the year, that would be a healthy appreciation for the year at 5%. So I have a feeling like we're going to see a lot of stability through the rest of this year. Um, but that's a good thing. And it's also a good that we just freak out. Because <laughs> they make emotional decisions, and that's when all kinds of needs are done, right? So um, play, I just suggest you play on that. Because, uh, you know, anytime rates have gone down lately, I get a ton of calls that day, and that's what's happening right now. People are calling us back. So, pretty exciting. Excellent. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, next week, I guess we'll go through it. Um, I did a class and, and a few months attended, Michael attended, but I, uh, I'm excited to share with you guys scripts that I have for the entire process of the transaction, but also to get deals uh, and to make cold calls, whether it's chasing builders, chasing uh, business partners, and just building your database. So, this is a packet, it's nine different scripts that I want to provide to you guys. So it sounds like I'm going to get to go over with you next week. Awesome. Let's give her a hand. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Yeah, Rodney Rose with uh, New Orleans Capital. Like Alicia was saying, the market is super volatile. Make sure you're staying in close touch with your uh, lenders. Two large lenders went out of business, one yesterday and one last week. That means the deals, if you're with one of them, they're not probably going to close, right? <laughs> so the market's really volatile, and, it, 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 and we're going to see a little more of that before we settle down. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up is I have a new product that's really perfect for the market right now. People that have the twos and threes on their interest rates aren't real excited about getting rid of them. And to free up some money to do an investment or something else, 
I have a fixed second loan. It's called an e-loan. And the rates start around seven. They go up to 90% LTV. Easy, quick qualifying process. So that can either help with the buy down or maybe avoid mortgage insurance. You can stack it with the new first. Lots of different ways to use that. So that's a new product. Usually don't, usually you're gonna get a, a home equity line of credit. Those are variable rates. This is a fixed rate. It goes up to 90%, um, you know, depends on the LTV with the FICO, I mean, for the rate. So it's a new product coming out. But really watch the market. It is very volatile and you're going to start seeing some people going out of business. So just a heads up on that. Uh, two questions. One, uh, who, uh, which, are, which of the two companies went out of business? Or is that a... Not yeah, Sprout Mortgage was one yesterday. Uh, Sprout and, Mortgage? Yeah, and First Guarantee. Yeah. Those are both large lenders. Wow. So uh, they're more on the wholesale side, some of them have retail. So it's a it, it's kind of a sign of the times. Yeah. There are one more question uh, about the existing deal. <clears throat> um, I understand they might go, not go through, but if uh, another company picks up those, Deals, uh, will the deals go through? Well, it's you know, it depends because you have a rate lock, maybe they were locked at a lower rate than it's failed to pay. You got appraisal issues, you got documentation transfers. Um, likely, yeah, you'll be able to get some closed, you know, but there's those risks and there, it's going to be a process. It's definitely going to be a delay. So, just want to just a heads up there. If you're getting any weird vibe, you might want to probe, probe into that a little bit more. All right, let's get Rodney Hand. Thank you. Next is upcoming events. We have one event coming up up here on the screen, July 21st, become a luxury specialist. That's not a P card, it's at the Granite Bay Country Club. And then the time normally I think is 10 to noon. This one's 10 to two, 10 to two. What was that? So one quick tip for, for those of you that want to do agent attraction, it takes two minutes to send a text or a Facebook message or an email to invite an agent to this event. So if it takes you two minutes and you invite five agents a day, how much time is that a day? 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day. So you play, you gamify it. And you've set a goal. I'm going to invite five agents a day, every day between now and the event, which is the 21st, which is how many days that is, 14 days. And that will get you several guests to the event and then put them in your pipeline and help you build your business. All right. We now have a very special guest speaker. Krista Proctor is here, and she is going to share some incredible information with you All right, so good to be here with all of you guys. I was telling Eric today, I it, I think it's been a while since I've been here because I hardly recognize anybody in this room. <laughs> it's amazing, that's so great. So we have so many people, uh, you know, just joining the family, the Brent Go family. I always told Brent, I just wanna always be in your vortex, right? Can you guys kind of relate to that? So. Um, I started in real estate in 2013 and Brent was my, you know, team leader, my mentor, my, um, he taught me everything. He taught me my first open houses. I, he showed me how to set up signs when nobody was coming to the open house. He's like, stand here. I'm going to go check the signs and make sure nobody took them. Like, you know, so he's, he's this amazing mentor and I'm really happy to be, oh, thanks. Thanks, Rob. Should I move out of the way or yeah, either, either one? Either one? Okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to not stand in the center. I, I felt crooked over here. Yeah. So anyway, so um, Brent asked if I would talk about how to conduct a buyer workshop. So I was like, okay, I can't just say buyer workshop. Let's give it a, like a Brent go. How to conduct a killer, extraordinary, <laughs> amazing, over the top, smashing it buyer workshop. That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So uh, I think right now with everything we're hearing today, you know, there's always opportunity 
whenever there's uncertainty and it's how we are seeing it right and so i love alicia's attitude like anytime you hear alicia talk she's always going after what the opportunity is and i you know it's i think it's just a skill that we all develop over time and if we don't have it we need to you know definitely being in this meeting you're in the right place because you're going to get that you're going to hear that so the buyer workshop i think it's going to you know do a couple things first of all everybody in your sphere of influence even if you don't feel like an expert you're a realtor you're a real estate professional they assume you're an expert in the market and so it's okay if you don't feel like an expert you you actually you have what it takes you already have everything you need inside of you right now today to present an amazing workshop and show hope and leadership. And I think that's the two things that people need right now. They need hope and they need leadership. And so it, that doesn't matter if you're in a deal and maybe the lender just went out of business on your buyer. Okay, you're gonna provide hope and you're gonna provide leadership. And how are you gonna do that? It's through the relationships you have. And you have just sitting in this room, looking around the room, you literally have everything you need to do all of this that we're going to talk about today. So, you know, there's that saying, like, what is your why? Have you guys, you know, right? I remember when I first heard that question, I was living in survival mode. And I was like, what's my why? <laughs> Honestly, I just want to buy my kids more than a McDonald's ice cream and, and have it be, you know, so I didn't really figure out my why, but then later I realized, oh, well, my why was because I wanted a better life for my kids, right? But I was in such survival mode, I couldn't even put words to that. So I don't know where you're at today with your why. I don't even know that it matters that you always know your why, but I know that this is what matters. You need to know the why of your client. You need to understand what's their reason. What's their motivation? Are they interested in buying a home? Why is that? Are they interested in selling? Why exactly is that? Because if you don't know exactly why they want to do what they're doing, you'll never be able to help them across the finish line when things get a little bit tense or, they, you know, so you need to understand what is it they want? If you help enough people get what they want, you'll always get what you want. You won't even have to think about it. It will just happen automatically. So. There are so many workshops you could do for buyers, all right? And I've listed a few right here. So you've got first time home buyers, you've got move up buyers, buyers who they've owned for a while, but they're like, wait, we have our rate locked in at 2% now, but we need a bigger house. How in the world are we gonna afford that? We have twins on the way. We're living in a three bedroom house where we have two kids or mom and dad need to move in with us, whatever. You know, there's always gonna be people that have to move, right? So um, the market's always moving. It's just, are we positioned to help people through that? So if they're locked in at this rate, well, okay, you know what? My lender, Rodney, he can come do, help, help do a workshop on how do you move up without risking your interest rate and sacrificing your interest. There's so many things you could do. Move up buyers, you could do investor workshop. What about downsizers? How many boomers do you know right now that need to get rid of not just their house that's 4,000 square feet that no one's living in, but also all the crap they have in right. it, right? So people feel so stuck. I'm working with three seniors right now that literally don't know what they're going to do with their stuff. And that alone can make them stuck, all right? So uh, downsizers, estate planning. What about people, how many probate deals have you encountered? I, I've done some probate deals. So people need help and they don't realize what probate is, how it affects them, how it affects their family. Um, veterans, home buying workshops, first responders, you know, there's special loan programs for first responders. So what connections do you have? Who do you know? And start thinking about those veins. Okay, I just, hearing you talk today, I was like, you could do, a seller's workshop for people people who want to do for sale by owner. Help them know what some good practices are. And by the time you're done telling them everything it takes to get top market, <laughs> top dollar for their house, they're going to say, okay, can I just hire you? <laughs> so, um, so what is your, like, why are you doing it? You know, because you, you don't want to just do a random home buyer workshop. 
You, you won't have the content you need. You won't have the team you need. You want to know what is it you're saying? Who are you talking to? So then gather your team of experts, all right? You do not have to know anything at all. You can be a brand new licensed agent, never have sold a house before, and do an amazing home buyer workshop. It's who do you know? You know, you just be the host, you be nice, and we'll talk about how to do that later, um, how to set a good environment, but you you just make it happen and you be the inviter and the promoter and then you know just set a leash up there and just add water and boom let her go <laughs> as an example I'm just saying. so you know uh, just so who's your, who's your lender you know talk, get with your lender find out hey what are some great programs right now what are you seeing out there uh what about an estate attorney because those attorneys are looking for agents that they know are going to be consistently there. And maybe after that workshop, they might feed you some leads if they see, oh, wow, they actually, they have their, you know, poop in a group. That's what Cindy says all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they've got a team. So what about a property manager? If you want to do an investor workshop, who's your favorite property manager? And that property manager can do a, a talk about how do you identify a good candidate? What makes it a good candidate? How do you analyze a property that you might want to buy? You might not know any of this stuff, but you'll get to learn right along with your clients. Um, a tax specialist, have you ever done a 1031 exchange? If you don't know what that is, write it down, look it up. You need to understand that there are people who buy and sell properties and they're investors. And they're not even really fully aware of how all that works. All they know is they want to avoid taxes as much as possible. So um, hire a guest speaker on flipping. If you don't know a flipper who's willing to partner with, just pay somebody, you know, pay them, ask them, hey, how much would you charge to come speak to a group of people? And then, so come up with a provocative name for the event. Who's the master of that? Brent is the master about that. All right, so I have some examples and I took the liberty of just, um let's see how do i i you I want this back that. on yeah and i don't know what do i do just push it forward Should right be. right click yep I, I have no idea what to do <laughs> <laughs> i clicked it but yeah move down there right <laughs> all right here we go here's john and valerie oh wait go back Okay, how to optimize real estate to reduce taxes. I could have said like wipe out taxes. That's what probably not to do. But anyway, so you know, there's Never there's an example. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so go ahead to the next one. Avoid so, taxes. Um, that says first. You can't see it behind the first responder real estate workshop. Fantastic home buying deals. Um, so the next one. Uh, veterans real estate workshop. VA loan specialist on site. Okay, so um, go ahead next. Uh, how to get the deal of a lifetime, you know. So uh, you can even put there certain programs that where you could say how to buy a home with zero money out of pocket. That's a real thing, right? So uh, next. That's okay, that's it. Those are just some examples, right? And so you don't want to uh, just do a to make it too general, you want to be a little more specific so you know who you're inviting. All right, so set a simple agenda. All right, meetings do not make themselves happen. Right. You don't just throw out an invitation and let a couple people know and then, oh, wow, people show up. That is not what happens. Chairs don't set themselves up. Music and environment doesn't make itself happen. So you want to think about everything, be very intentional. Um, go look at a few rooms you know if you're partnering with a lender they might have a really cool um boardroom or something or or educational room that you could use and so uh go check it out you know make sure it looks good is there uh boxes full of papers all over the floor don't don't use that room you know find something like find something that looks clean professional organized orderly doesn't have audiovisual equipment 
Is there a um, speaker system so that you can play music? If not, have a really nice Bluetooth, not a cheap $25 model from TJ Maxx that you got or Target, right? Like get a nice Bluetooth system that sounds good so you can have music playing. Um, what about, uh, so let me go through a simple agenda and then I'll talk about a few other things on setting the environment. So here's just a simple sample agenda that you could do. So easy, first 10 minutes, just meet and greet. Let's say it starts at, you know, 6.30 p.m. So it's 6.30 to 8 p.m. 6.30, you know, people are warming up. Maybe they're still getting there off work. Maybe you have a few things for them to um, eat, like buy something simple. They can snack because when people are holding something in their hand, it's easier for them to talk. You know, have some coffee there. It's easy, easy to get a traveler thing from Starbucks. I mean, this is not rocket science, but these things all, it's the details that make a difference and that it lets people know that they're important and you prepared for them. And it makes you look even more professional, like you're really on your game. So um, have meet and greet for a few minutes. You know, you might probably won't start right on time because you want people to get there then, but don't start too late. Like have a time that you are starting because you want to respect people's time that did come. So then you, you're the one to welcome up, you know, to welcome and open up and you just welcome everyone there, say how glad, you know, you are that they're there. Tell some sort of inspirational story. You need a moment of inspiration. You need to, even what I said earlier could be enough. You could say, you know what, today, a lot of people are really nervous about this market, but I'm here to tell you there is so much opportunity in this market. There's so much hope, and we're going to provide you tonight with some amazing options and some how-to that can help you build wealth for not just yourself, but your children and grandchildren. <coughs> Does that inspire anybody? Yeah. It's very inspiring. Who would like to work with me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I mean, just be sincere. And why are we doing what we're doing? Either we believe in what we're doing or we don't. You know, I believe that we do need people to own homes because if we don't, right. all of real estate is going to be owned by corporations. That's not going to be a pretty picture in society. So we need to help people really build generational wealth. So this is a really great thing that we're doing, and we're on a mission to actually put wealth and ownership into the hands of the individuals. So, um, so welcome, moment of inspiration. You know, if you're working with veterans, maybe you have a veteran that uh, maybe you didn't even help them because if you're brand new, maybe you haven't sold a house yet, but maybe you have a friend that helped a veteran get into a home. And you could say, hey, would, would your client be willing to do like a little short interview? They could do a three minute testimonial on video about how the process was and how great it was and, and that they own a home now, you know, and show that. And then there's a bunch of other veterans in the room that maybe they have or haven't, you know, bought a home. Whatever it is you're doing, you could have a testimonial and then make it brief, three minutes. A, a three minute video is actually very long. You might want a two minute video. Um, so then have, this is just an example, right? Then maybe just have a little 10 minute market update. You could do that yourself or you could partner with a fellow agent that's maybe, if you're not confident, maybe they're more confident to just do a little 10 minute market update. Now, do you have to make up that content yourself? No. 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 Who did we just have here? What was it last week? Ryan Lundquist. Thank yeah. you, Ryan. Why would we ever have to reinvent anything, right? So just take some of his slides, give him the credit. You know, you are, you look like an expert. You are following the market. And so then how to, you do the how to portion. So whoever's doing the how to portion, it could be your lender. It could be the state planner. It could be the tax specialist. It could be you. If you're doing how to, how to um, how to write a winning offer, you know, in Brent Gove's book, um, have you guys read Momentum? If you haven't read that, that should be like your real estate Bible when you're a real estate agent. So how to write a winning offer, you know, you do that and you have your little chart. And so you could buy how to buy a home with zero out of pocket, how to find a flip, how, so it's your how to, right? And these are literally gonna be the steps that you're gonna walk them through if they want to move forward in the pursuit of this venture. And so you're gonna give them all the information. Then 
but at the end, you're going to just thank them for coming. Hey, we're all here to talk with you and have a call to action. Um, you could have, you know, a little survey at the end. Could you please do us a favor? Um, before we dismiss, we're, we're just going to hand out this two minute or whatever, 30 second survey. It has three questions on it. Was this a value? Um, is there, a, I would like more information on and whatever it is, and then you know they want to follow up, okay? And then you're all around and they could stay. So the environment is key. You need a good vibe in the room. It needs to be easy to find. How many office buildings have you shown up to and you're like, where do I go? Yeah. yeah. Don't assume they, they can find the address and the suite number. You know, and some office buildings lock after a certain time. So I, I've done workshops before where it was like third floor. It was a beautiful lender conference room. It was a really cool room, but the doors locked. So we had a greeter downstairs outside the door because in the evening, and then we had directional signs all the way to the elevator upstairs. Yeah, go here, go here. So make it like you have actually given this some thought. You've prepared for it. And what does that say about how you do business? They're like automatically they're getting the message that you know what you're doing. And so then um, let's see, welcoming with greeters, have some music. What you do with the music is you don't have it blaring at first. If it's like a few people gathering, you have kind of have it quieter. Then if more and more and more people get in the room, you can turn it up a little bit. So, you know, um, what about the lighting and the sound? Don't assume you're going to run all of that yourself. Even if there's like less than 10 people at this workshop, that that's a lot. You need one person dedicated. I mean, hire your teenager, whoever you can get to make sure that that doesn't uh, go badly. And then um, practice your setup. Don't let your setup be when you get there the, for the first time. Go the day before a few hours before practice, because you might find out you have the wrong cord and you got to go to Best Buy and get it or whatever it is. So just be prepared. And then uh, what you want to do is stack the deck in your favor, okay, for this whole event to go well. So first, don't do this by yourself. I mean, you're doing all this work. Why not partner with some other agents, do it together, and who they invite is <clears throat> is their lead, who you invite is your client. But if you do it together, there's a lot more momentum around it um, because you might invite 25 people and five can make it. Maybe 10 RSVP, but then the day of five of them decide that, ah, eh, I'm gonna skip it, you know? So you have five, that's actually a great turnout. It's not bad, but if you partner with two or three other agents, you now have, four guaranteed if there's four of you. So there's four of you in the room guaranteed, plus your five that, oh my gosh, now we've doubled the attendance. And then if they each have two or three, oh my word, yeah, like almost 20 people, that's a really good crowd. Wouldn't you think that there's better momentum? And then also, not to mention your uh, lender who's there, maybe you have a, you know, who, whatever you're doing, a property manager. So you're stacking the deck in your favor, okay? And then the other thing is that third party validation psychologically is so important. Now when they come, they see, whoa, this is like bigger than, than Barry right here. Like, whoa, Barry's got like a whole group he's connected with, you know? And so it just legitimizes you even more. The other thing is um, invite other professionals. Maybe they're not even in the real estate industry. Do you know, I mean, a tax advisor who just uh, wants to add value to his clients. Hey, um, Mr. or Mrs. Tax Advisor, I am offering this workshop. Do you have any clients that you feel like if you offered this to them, I could give you, you know, 10 tickets. Would that be enough? Do you have 10 clients that you'd want to add value to? Now they don't know it's free. Do they have to know it's free? Oh my gosh, I have 10 tickets. Do you want one? That's, that's all it takes. Yeah, I have five tickets to this event and I'd love to sponsor you. And if you give that to your, you know, tax professional or whoever it is you're working with, maybe an insurance agent, you know, use your business to business peers and create 
some momentum around it together. And then they'll appreciate, wow, okay, you're doing all this work for something I can add value to my clients. That's just going to elevate them too. Um, the other thing you could do is, you know, this whole, uh, like the aging situation, the aging population, that is a real serious like need right now. There are people who do placement for um, homes, for uh, like assisted living and other things like that. Partner with somebody like that and just say, hey, do you have any families that you know, you're working with that are trying to figure out what in the world do I do with mom or dad's house? What do we do with their stuff? You know, it's not even the house, but the stuff, or maybe the house is like in such disrepair they might not realize that you have contacts, you have investors that will literally come in at no cost to that family, take everything, and they just walk away with the items they want to keep, and then everything else is done. And you represent that investor, and then maybe you could represent them on the listing as well once they do it all. So you can get creative. Um, let's see. All right. So allow others to leverage the same workshop you're doing, and it will be a win-win. You'll be so glad. Um, make a list of twice as many people as you hope to have in attendance. Like, I would say no less than 25 people. Like, you should probably invite 50 people if you want 20 people there. Probably 100 people. <laughs> so, <laughs> just twice, you know? And what are you going to do? You're not going to email them only. You can email them, great. You can send them an, a printed mail. Printed mail actually still works, you know, just so you know, it's very effective. And you could text them the flyer, email them the flyer, but you need to personally call them. You need to pick up the phone. You need to talk to them, let them hear your voice. If they don't pick up, leave them a voicemail, send them a video of yourself inviting them and then follow up with the flyer. Hey, we talked about last year, Crystal, I know that you were thinking about wanting to jump into the investment market, but you thought maybe now that wasn't the time. Hey, now might be the time. You won't believe the deals that we're seeing out there. Um, so I'm doing that investor workshop coming up. I thought about you. So, you know, what, like make it sincere, but let it be a, an actual invitation and then send reminder texts the day before to the people who have RSVP and the day of, because just things happen and people forget. And then after the event, follow up, follow up. That's your pipeline, that's your database. And just if they don't make a move right then immediately, that's okay. The, the goal that you're, you wanna be like, see yourself as a business owner not as just transactional only you're creating a database of clients that are going to look to you for their whole life long as the expert so if they don't make a move with you right now if you stay in touch stay in touch stay in touch stay in touch over time i i remember saying this before when i was in here last time for every um 100 properly nurtured people in your database, you'll get about 14 deals per year. So you can, you keep grow, use this to grow your database, grow your follow up, follow up. And if they're not making a move on this particular thing you just did, you keep, keep them in your mailing list, keep them in your email list, uh, send them a text every now and then, make sure you're connecting with them on social media, you're following, you're touching them. And then they're going to be a client for life. So I hope that is of help to you guys. And that was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I, I want to speak just a little bit to what you shared because this has been my wheelhouse. So I've been in the events industry for many, many years, several decades. And I want to plant a couple seeds and piggyback on what she was sharing. And I'm assuming that in doing these events, it's brought you a significant amount of business over time. Is that true to say? Well, it, it, it's got to be a compound effect, right? Over yeah. time, yeah, right. Yeah, so it's not necessarily like directly, she did the event, turned into a transaction, but it's the long game, Yeah. right? And this can mean hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional commissions to you. So one concept to have you consider is you can do what she just shared in addition to in the workshop you could do it on zoom so we're on zoom right now and zoom lets you record 
So I did a class last week, how to make the next six months your best six months ever. And this is a clickable link that I can send over Facebook. I can email it. I can text it. So what I could do is I could go to somebody and say, hey, because I'm in the, the training industry, but I'm in real estate, I could say to somebody, that July just started, it's the second half of the year, would you be interested in this webinar that I just taught? And if they say yes, I'm going to send them this link. If they watch the webinar, they're going to become more familiar with me. So for you doing the for sale by owner, if you did a, say a, a 25 minute Zoom that you recorded like this, and you're prospecting these for sale by owners, and you say, I recently did a class for people that want to do for sale by owner to help them to be more successful, <clears throat> would you be interested in that class? If he prospected that class, the recording of it, you think some for sale by owners might be interested? Yes, yes absolutely. Okay, so check this out. He does that, let's say you record it today, hypothetically. A year from now, he could still market the class. Right, yes. Right, right, yes. Okay, and to what Krista was saying, you want to become the real estate solution for life. And that's a, it's different than transactional. And so what your the conversation oftentimes in rooms like this is around uh, how do you write the contract? How do you get the 6% commission? How do you, how do you do an open house? All the, how to be successful as a real estate agent, which is awesome. This though is a different conversation. Being the real estate solution for life, it's a different conversation because what you're doing, what she's talking about, it's the way that I sell and it's selling by education. So I don't, for me in the coaching business, I don't look for coaching clients. I look for people that are interested in learning how to make more sales. It's a different conversation. So I'm attracting people to me that are interested in that conversation and that I become the obvious choice. So while you're doing all the traditional prospecting that you're doing, you can sell by education. If you look at Brent's strategy for agent attraction, what is the strategy? It's education. Yeah. It's events. Mm -hmm. The event that's coming up, the how to you know become a luxury agent. If you look at the strategy behind that, the whole strategy is to become the, the top provider of real estate education for the region. If you really look at what Brent's doing, he's positioning EXP, Brent Gove, and you guys as we are providing, we're the, we're the place you come to for education. So now they're getting more education from all the vision that Brent has than from their own broker. But you can do this on your level. So there, there's a lot that, that can be done here. So one seed to plant for you guys. How many of you like what Krista was sharing about yes. that? Yes. Okay. You might be sitting in the room going, that's awesome. How do I execute on that? What would that actually look like? Because there's a lot of moving parts. And it's a whole different thing than being a professional real estate agent, which is what you've been trained on for the last 10, 20, 30 years. So if any of you would like a half an hour with me on the house to have a conversation about how would I actually execute on that, then just reach out to me, probably have my contact info. If you don't, you just put it up here on the screen here. Just shoot me a text and I'll meet with you over phone, Zoom, or we can meet in person because I'm local. Put that in the Zoom chat. This is my cell phone. I'll give you one session with me on the house. You can ask me anything you want about how to, how to actually execute on what Crystal was sharing because that was some brilliant content and you might be like, what would be the first step? I'm going to say one last thing and then we'll, we'll wrap the meeting unless anybody has a question. If you think about the long-term implication of that strategy, so some of you know Levi out of Texas with the YouTube channel, okay? That's a strategy kind of like what Crystal was talking about. So you don't just, if you were to build a YouTube channel, it's not just, I'm just going to roll out of bed and do a YouTube channel. That's like a commitment to learning a whole new thing in your business. Right, but Levi, he's really focused on it. He's making a ton of money with the YouTube channel. So does that mean that everybody should be doing a YouTube channel? Well, probably not everybody, but maybe you go, I'm gonna plant my flag and really learn 
the YouTube game. So with what Crystal was sharing, you might think about, do you want to plant your flag and really learn how do I do these events? It's probably a 12 month process. Not that it takes 12 months to do an event, but to really learn it and just thinking like, does that resonate with me? Now, if you did that, it, this conversation, if you made that decision, it's probably an extra million dollars to you between now and the end of your career. Because when you're doing the events, you want all those people registering to go into your database. And you want to be drip marketing on all those people through email, possibly direct mail, text, social media. And so you go to your database whenever you're doing these events, and it's just one more reason to reach out to them. And now you're being positioned as the expert. And when you really look at what Brent's doing, you'll see this. Like, why did he write a book? Okay. Positions him as an expert. And this is the last thing I'll say unless anybody has a question is I teach people how to write a thin little book to get published on Amazon. So you're now an author. So when somebody Googles you, you're now a published author. And so these little thin books, I teach you how to write it in a day. And I'm actually teaching a class at the end of this month that it's a paid class, but I'll let you guys come for free. So it's over Zoom and you actually write a book in one day. Doesn't even sound believable, but I've gotten a lot of people to the finish line on that that are published authors. So, if any of you are interested in that, just shoot me a text. Hey, I want to do that class with you. If you can't make it live, I forget the date. I think it's the last Friday of the month. Uh, I have it on recording. You can do the recording and for you guys, it's totally free. Before we wrap the meeting, does anybody have anything that they wanted to ask for me? Or if you had a question for Krista, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yeah, Krista, uh, say you're a branding agent and you don't have any clients to reach out to. How would you work with them to get to this point? Well, you have friends, you have family, you know somebody, right? So, you know, you could just, I think right now in this market is a, like getting a killer deal on a home would be a great, would be a great topic because everybody's wondering what's happening on the market. And then you could just say, hey, have you, you just call people, stay in touch with them. Hey, and just let them know, hey, if you know anybody looking for a really good deal on a home, I am doing a free workshop coming up on that. Is there, you think you might know anybody who might be interested, who was maybe afraid to buy, but you know, they're, they want to know how to get a really good deal on a home right now. So you just start, you know, honestly, we're in sales. We have to pick the phone up. <laughs> Welcome to real estate. <laughs> so we have to just talk to people and, and we make friends and we serve people. So I don't, I don't know any way around talking to people. <laughs> just family yeah. I, I, every person, you know, you, you just know someone in your life. Like, you know, people, people at the park, neighbors. Um, I remember when I was a new agent and then I, I was working really hard doing open houses. That was the whole, that was how I built my business the first three years was just open houses through strangers, right? So you've got that always, you can do open houses. And then I remember I had some friends who always were buying and selling homes. And I was so green, I didn't even know how that worked. Like I didn't know that usually if you're an investor, you have an agent that if they help you find the home, you probably use them to list the home. You know, I didn't know any of that. So that's what had happened. They were going to flip a high-end home. That's what they always did, high-end homes. So I thought, what kind of agent am I if I don't call these people and ask for an opportunity to go to the table and, and throw my hat in the ring and list this home for them? So I called. I was so nervous. Like, it took me three days to work at my courage. I finally <laughs> called. I'm like, hey, just, you know, how are you? And I'm like, hey, I know you guys are getting that home ready to for sale. And I was just wondering, would you guys be open to letting me have an opportunity to, you know, show you what we do and just throw our hat in the ring to possibly become your agent to list the home? I was so nervous to ask that question. And then that she's like, oh, that's so nice. You know, she goes, we actually already have an agent that we've been working with for a long time. And she kind of helps us find the homes and then she sells them for us. So that's how I learned. <laughs> I didn't know. And so I was like, oh, no problem. You know, it didn't affect our friendship, of course. I mean, I was still, and that's, I just learned that. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's kind of how that works, I guess. Because I had never worked with investors. And then a couple years later, I just, you know, was always in front of people doing my work. And then um, 
their home wasn't selling and they called me at the end of the listing to say, hey, we wanted to just know, you know, if you would ever come and look at this house and tell us what you think. It's not selling and it had been on the market for six months. So I went and I was so, still so new. I was hardly doing listing appointments by myself at that point. So I took Brent with me and we got the listing. And um, if you've ever worked on Brent's team, he it like it was my listing. He just partnered with me on it. Right. And so. Um, we had it sold the first weekend on market and multiple offers, you know, after they did some things that we recommended. But anyway, I'm now their agent of choice ever since then. So how did I, I'm just saying, you got to pick the phone up. You got to make that call. You have to talk to people. I don't know any other way around it. I wish we could just wear a badge and then people would just flock to us. I wish. <laughs> I was thinking, whoever your preferred title company is, obviously you always see Lexi and I showing up, so yeah. we'd love to work with you. Wherever you want to hold the seminar, pull the name, have one of us or yeah. whoever you work with, pull the neighborhoods around it, see who the non-owner occupied yeah. homes are, or not. I mean, you already typically don't have the marketing funds, right? So you don't have to buy phone numbers, mailers, anything like that. Door knock the renters and invite them. Yeah. And like Krista said, if you want, you know, 25 people to show up, knock a hundred homes. And the other thing is the knocking is important because if you just send them a flyer, they have no association with you. And I've helped so many renters become homeowners. They have no idea that, you know, if they could rent, they could maybe afford to buy a home too. So. Okay, I want to give you one, one more idea on what you were asking and see if I can deliver a breakthrough to one or more of you in the room. So I spoke recently at Women's Council of Realtors to run just like this, building real estate agents. And one solar guy. That's very smart. He's the only solar guy in the room. Okay. So I'm right now, I'm with a group of real estate professionals, and I'm the only sales coach in the room. That's smart. So if you want to fill up an event, the best way to fill an event, aside from your own database, is you leverage networks. This is a business strategy. So why does Starbucks go to Barnes & Noble? Because Barnes & Noble has foot traffic. So they go to Barnes & Noble and say, hey, put our Starbucks over in the corner. You don't get much foot, not much people going over in the corner. So we'll turn that into a profit center for you. Well, you and I can be like Starbucks. So you're going to look for networks where there's an already existing network that's not real estate, especially other sales professionals in the community especially if they have an email list. So I have an email list that I can email just my 916 area code people. So if you meet somebody like me that has an email list that can email just the local people, you want that to go ding, 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 ding. I need to pay attention to that because now you can come to me and my database is, is I'm not a real estate agent. So you come to me and say, hey, I got this event. Any possibility you can help me get the word out to your list. So then I email my database of a thousand people and you can do deals like that all day long. The strategy is to leverage networks. So when you meet somebody, like when I meet Brent, I can sell to Brent and that's great. Get Brent as my client, that's great. But what's more valuable? Brent is my client or his 30,000 people? Right, right, right. So when you do real estate with somebody, you help them buy or sell, you want to think beyond, it's like the Verizon commercial, right? It's the guy and then all the people behind him. This is the million dollar idea for you. You want to be thinking about networks. Most people are just thinking about, well, I'm going to sell to this person. Think about the network. And then when you combine what Krista was teaching you and you do these events, and then you invite to the events through the networks. And then you find other people that would benefit from the people in the room. In other words, the tax prep person, you go to the tax prep person, you go, Hey, I'll promote you to the people that come to the seminar. If you'll invite also. Right. So That's let's give Chris another big round of applause. For the <laughs> Let's have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.